party member isn't the only form of political participation. What else should women be doing? Yeah, I think uh, women should mobilize themselves first and foremost. I think those who are already in politics should be able to mobilize the women, sensitize them because a lot of women don't even know, you know what is at stake and what they're supposed to be doing. Mobilizing them will include ensuring that you register as a voter. In sensitizing and mobilizing them, you let them know what to look out for you know, in a very good candidate or who they consider could be their representative. So women need to begin to, you know, put themselves together as a block. It's very, very important that you come together and think alike. And in doing that, you'll be able to rally around support for whoever it is that you feel, you know, has uh, met what you're looking for. You it's know, the criteria. In, yeah, the criteria that you will have. You know. While increasing the number of women in leadership positions is clearly important, are we equally focusing on ensuring that the conditions also improve for the masses of the women, those we call the ordinary women? What can we be doing to make sure that things get better for them? Yes, I think uh, this now doesn't have to do with whether you're in politics or not. Mm. Um, as women, we should be our sister's keeper. We should be able to, in our various communities or where we live, be able to lend a helping hand, you know, to other women. There's so many widows out there. There's so many women who are jobless. There's so many women who are traumatized, you know, in any field or in any area whatsoever. You should be able to lend a hand to your fellow women. And that will, you know, go a long way. Now let's talk about the National Assembly, your okay. former constituency. Uh, how would the bipartisan nature of the Senate leadership help uh, benefit the polity? That's if you think it will. Yeah, I think um, it will. It's presently, it's supposed to promote healthy relationship, but even then, we can see that it's not. Uh, for the Senate, I would have expected that um, they come together whether APC or PDP, and try, you know, to work together. But just because one party, it has never happened. And I think that's why it's causing a lot of problem. But as we go along, because um, I at least know Deputy Senate President very well, he's a member of my party, and I don't think he's someone who will ordinarily, you know, want to upset anything at all. Uh, he is committed to the National Assembly because as an institution, once you pass through that institution, you must be re ready to continually you know, support and build that institution. And I think he is one person that would do that, irrespective of the fact that he's deputy to someone from another party. What are juicy committees? And why is the chairmanship of such committees causing such uh, furore in, in the House? <sighs> Modeli. Yes, um, I think um, if you watched one of the sessions in the House where someone got up and referred to juicy committees, the speaker rightly corrected him that there was nothing like juicy committees. Um, it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's the kind of influence that you are able to willed when you're a chairman of a particular committee. And then because of the gradings, they grade these committees into A, B, and C, depending on the importance of the committee to the national economy. And I think that's why people now say juicy committees, because uh, it's not as if the House pays you separately for being a chairman of whether A or B or C or D committee. The House doesn't pay you. so. Um, Granted, if you're the chairman of a committee like um, internal affairs, for instance, you have an opportunity to be able to get jobs for so many of your constituents because internal affairs, you have customs, you have uh, civil defense, you have these paramilitary you know, organizations where they really employ. And you know, that alone will definitely raise your 
uh, the bar in the presence of your constituents. So that's so, a juicy committee there. It is. And if you want to say juicy committee, because he's able to influence, he's able to get, and these are, you know, the kind of things that members want to, you know, do to be able to at least go back to their electorate and say, oh, I did well for you. I need a second term or something like that. I was very particular also about getting jobs for my people or getting them employed. So I know what you're, what you're thinking, that maybe they get certain benefits you know, from the committee. From my own, you know, understanding, that is what I would tell you. Somebody else, you know, may have a different uh, opinion. But where you can have influence that will impact positively on your constituents, you know, uh, that is what I consider. I won't even say it's juicy. It's just a committee that can enhance your, yeah, your profile. That is, you know, what I will say it is. What do you think of Speaker Dogara, what kind of leader do you think he will make? Okay. He's only just started. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure you remember that when I contested as Speaker in 2011, uh, Right Honorable Dogara was to be my Deputy Speaker at that time. And uh, we, we were in the House from 2007, and we've, he was even in my committee, the Judiciary Committee. So we worked closely. He's, a very amiable person, very intelligent as well. I guess he has worked in the civil service before, so he's a very good administrator, you know, from his performance as chairman house services. And uh, he's someone who believes in teamwork. And that's what you need to be, really be a leader in the house, because you know the speaker is first among equals. It's not as if you are the boss or you are the ogre, like people will look at it, even though you wield a lot of power, but you need the consent of your people as you go along. You must carry your people along. And I think, you know, um, he will make a very good speaker because, and he listens also. Someone you can advise and he will take to your advice. So I think um, he, will, he will do well.